Hello friends, welcome to a Q&A video. I haven't done one of these in quite some time and I'm looking forward to answering your questions. I asked on Instagram and YouTube and so I will pull from those two places um, and answer as many as I can in the time that I have. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in hearing about all things homemaking, motherhood, homeschool and that kind of thing, then keep watching. Okay, I'm gonna jump right into it. So it says, it's fall there in the Southern Hemisphere, spring here in the Northern, since most books, TV shows, movies are centered in the Northern Hemisphere, is it weird having the seasons reversed when reading books slash watching movies? Um, and I would just say, I don't think it's weird because it's all we've ever known. <laughs> so, um, like, it's like people think it's weird that we watch like Christmas movies that have snow and stuff in them when it's summer where we are, but that's like literally all we've ever known. So it probably would feel weird if those of you in the Northern Hemisphere were watching like summertime stuff during your winter because you don't usually do it. But for us, it's like normal because it's all we know, I guess. Um, so it doesn't feel weird at all and I think I do think that especially places like New Zealand it's such a tiny little island so much of our media comes from overseas that we're very conscious of what's going on in the greater world um, and so there's just very much an awareness of the fact that you know there's different seasons and different ways of doing things and that kind of stuff um, just because we, we're exposed to that all the time. So yeah, um, next one, do you use a Bible curriculum? What Bible do you use? Okay, there's actually a few questions here. So um, our Bible curriculum is sunlight, but really it's like literally just reading the Bible. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do in the future. I don't know if we're, I don't think we're gonna use sunlight for Bible forever. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm also not somebody who loves the idea of using a Bible curriculum, to be absolutely honest with you, because I don't, I don't know, I don't like the idea of like just handing it the, that kind of education over. And I'm not saying anyone who uses a Bible curriculum is doing that, but it's just that um, it's not something that you can just wrap up with a tidy little bow and say like, here we go, we've studied the Bible for today, tick that one off. You know, like it's stuff that is incorporated all of the time, daily as you go. So yeah, there, I think I'll probably just pull different resources throughout the years and obviously just reading straight scripture. We do scripture memory. I think that's such a hugely important part of studying the Bible um, because it just instills those truths in your kid's heart. So yeah, we use that. The Bible that we use is the KJV. Um, I've always used that since I was a little child and I still use it now. Um, and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I know that lots of people use modern translations. I just, I cannot. It's like taking Shakespeare and putting it into modern language. I just cannot handle it. <laughs> so I love, I know that it can be more difficult to understand for people, but because I've grown up with it, I, yeah, I just, I love it. It's like poetry to me. It's beautiful. So, um, yeah, I use the KJV. We use the KJV and that's what my kids learn from too. Um, where do you shop for clothes? You always look so cute and modest. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm i not a big clothes shopper at all. Um, it's just not something, I like cute clothes. I like to feel, you know, put together and nice, but it's not something I put a huge, a lot, a, a lot of value on. I don't spend a lot of money on clothes at all. And I very rarely go clothes shopping. In fact, I kind of desperately need to, cause there's a couple of key pieces that I need for the winter and I just put it off because I don't like spending the money and also I just find it so difficult to find what I like. Um, my favorite place honestly to shop for clothes is the thrift store or the op shop is what we call it in New Zealand because I find that you get like designer brands and like nicely tailored clothing at a fraction of the cost. So um, we don't have a lot of good uh, thrift stores where I live but there are in towns nearby me. So when I can, I look there for nice things. Cause I often, I've, I've got things in my closet I, for, I've had for years and years and years that I bought from thrift stores and they just last forever. So um, yeah, I try and just buy things that I love. And, the, and I've always been, um, this is not like to toot my own horn, but like I am good at 
keeping a minimal closet and that's because I didn't have closet space at all. Um, like I've always had to switch out my clothes seasonally because I don't have enough space in my closet. Like walk-in wardrobes are, are like a, um, a real luxury here in New Zealand. They're not common. In new builds they are, but in older houses you literally get like this much space for your clothes a lot of the time. So um, you have to be intentional about what you're buying. And I hate buying things that I don't love or I'm not comfortable in. And so I just don't. And what I tend to do is when I take out my clothes for the season, um, I flip the hangers around the wrong way. And then if I haven't worn it that entire season, I donate it because obviously I don't like it enough to wear it. So um, that's kind of my rule of thumb with um, clothing. I did use, uh, what was it called? The Front Fighters or Front, I think that's her name of her blog, Front Fighters. After I had my third daughter, I really needed a wardrobe refresh. You know, I'd had three kids real close together and I just didn't even know what I liked anymore. My body had changed. Um, and I used her guide to kind of give me a little bit of a base for my closet and I really enjoyed that. So recommend that if you're looking for some like inspiration and a bit of a guide on like nice clothes to have and like good clothes to have in your closet. All right, and the last thing is what, last question from that same person is, what do you all eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Um, breakfast depends, it's usually cereal and toast or, um, and we do like usually, well, my kids at the moment love Rice Krispies, but that just like does not fill them up. But they're loving it and I'm like, whatever. So <laughs> they've been loving Rice Krispies, but otherwise Wheat Bix, which I think, I don't know, like I know they get that in Aussie and New Zealand and I'm pretty sure you guys have it in the UK, I've, but I don't know, is that like a, something you have in the States? I'm not sure. Um, but Wheat Bix is one thing that they eat, um, but also porridge. I make porridge, especially more so in the winter. It's just a really good source of so many nutrients and it's warm and filling. So that's what they, we typically have for breakfast. I usually have porridge every morning for myself. And then for lunch, I often just eat leftovers and the kids typically have sandwiches or if there's leftovers they like, they'll have those. Um, and for dinner, it just depends. Every night is different, but it's also pretty simple food and I just change things up. So um yeah, all sorts of things. We eat a lot of beef because we get home kill meat from my parents. And so um, I try and use mostly from that because it just saves us a ton of money. Um, I buy chicken like once a fortnight usually, but we mostly eat beef and venison because my father-in-law does a lot of hunting. So we often get venison from him. And then occasionally fish, especially in the summertime, um, we'll get fish given to us and we'll have like fresh fish for, for dinner, which is lovely. All right. Next question, have you ever considered selling unit studies? I haven't, I haven't. I don't know what I think about that. It would be, I did think about this the other day. It would be really fun to create unit studies that are um, for the part of the world I live in, New Zealand, because there's very little um, homeschool education material like specific to New Zealand. Um, but I don't know if I have the capacity to work on that at the moment, maybe in the future. Um, and then the next question is, once your kids conclude their homeschool education, will you go back to the workforce? So if you don't know, I am a qualified nurse. That is what I got my um, education in when I completed high school. And I did really enjoy working as a nurse. I don't think, I don't have plans to go back at, to being a nurse, um, even when my kids leave home, as much as I really enjoyed the job. I think there are other things that I could do that would be a lot more um, flexible as far as schedule and just, I like working for myself now. I have a business that brings in a good part-time income to our family. And I honestly have, I, I did speak to this in a video not long ago that I, um, I kind of have that business on maintenance mode. I'm not trying to grow it necessarily. I'm trying to diversify and sort of safeguard it and maintain it because I see the potential of it becoming a much um, bigger thing when I am finished raising my children. So am I gonna go out into the workforce? Probably not, highly unlikely, unless you know things change and I have to, but I don't think I'm ever gonna be somebody who just like, just is a stay-at-home mom. And I'm not saying that in a demeaning way, being a stay-at-home mom is full on, I do that, you know? <laughs> like it's a lot of work. Um, but I love the creative outlet and I love um, 
being an entrepreneur. I really enjoy that. I love the challenge of it and the creativity behind it all. So I don't think that I will ever be somebody who doesn't explore that in some way or another. Um, and I like the idea of being able to be a mentor one day to other homeschooling um, parents. Once I have walked through that journey with my own children, I really hope I can be more of a mentor to other homeschool parents because I love to teach. I really, really love it. And um, I enjoy seeing people learn and grow. And so that's kind of what I hold to. In the future, I can see me doing more of that. But who knows? There's a lot that can happen between now and then. And my, my mom does works very part-time. Um, but she is so busy because she has a million grandchildren and um, her life is very full and busy. And so I think sometimes we assume that when our children are grown, we'll have all this spare time. And I just don't think that's actually true for a lot of people, especially have, if you have like kids close by and a bigger family. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that sort of answers that. What's next? Um, what's your favorite meal or dessert? If I'm eating out, my favorite meal is these pork belly tacos from this one restaurant not far from where I live I like literally fantasize about them all the time they're so divine um at home my favorite meal is probably something like um a stew like a beef and bacon stew with dumplings I love that kind of like comfort food um and my Dessert is apple crumble. I love a good apple crumble. It's like my favorite. It's always been my favorite. Are you still making sourdough bread? You inspired me to make my sourdough starter. Thank you. That's very sweet. I have not made sourdough bread in a very long time and my son has been begging me to make it because he loves it. But I've been trying to like min <laughs> like cut back on stuff I'm doing. And so that was just not something I have the time for right now. But I'm sure that I will probably do it again at some point. Um, my starter did die when we moved from our old house to this house. I just never got time to like feed it. I had it in the fridge and then it was at the point where I was like, I just don't have time for this right now. So yeah, but um, I miss sourdough pancakes a lot. They're like the fluffiest pancakes I've ever been able to make and I would love to make them again. All right, uh, next question. It's pretty clear in this weird world, but what are your main motivations for homeschooling? How do you manage your time? Okay, sorry, there's lots of questions here. <laughs> you guys are great at giving me questions, but they're like all together. It's pretty clear in this weird world, what are your main motivations for homeschooling? I liked this question because I realized that my motivation for homeschooling has changed since I began homeschooling. I always planned to homeschool my kids. It was like something I had spoken to my husband about before we had even gotten engaged. It was like something I was not willing to compromise on. Um, and... Back then, I would have said that my motivations for homeschooling my kids were predominantly to keep them away from just the very, very um, ungodly influences in our country. Our, New Zealand is an extremely liberal and socialist country. It just is. <laughs> and um, it wasn't great when I was a kid, and I just knew how far it had come between when I was in school and now, um, like I just, the things that I'm seeing now, I'm just like, child Christine would never have even dreamed that this would be an issue as when she was an adult, that we would be discussing this. Like, it's just wild. So um, that was like my main motivator for sure. There's lots of reasons I wanted to homeschool, but that was probably one of the main things. I just wanted my kids to be able to have their innocence for as long as possible because they have their entire adulthood to be bombarded by, you know, all the influences of the world and just the brokenness of it. And I just wanted that their childhoods to remain innocent. But the further we've gotten into homeschooling, I think honestly, one of my main reasons now for homeschooling my kids is just time with them. Um, I think when you're in the baby years and you've got toddlers and little ones, you just kind of feel like you're gonna be there forever and it's just really hard. And then all of a sudden you're out of that stage and your kids are older and they're these really cool little people that are really fun to spend time with. And um, I just want as much of that as I can get. I just, I love it. I love having them with me. And I just think I would miss out on so much of that if they were in school. And so that's probably my main motivator at the moment is just being with my kids and just the closeness, how we're knit together as a family I love that in a world that is so changeable and there's so many like 
you know, just big headlines. It's always trying to scare you. And I just love that we have our own little safe family unit. Um, and then I get to pour into my children in that way. Like there's just no, no other job, job in this world that compares to the privilege that that is. So that would be my main motivator for homeschooling my kids at the moment. Um, okay, next question was, how do you manage your time? Um, I, that's kind of like an open, I don't know what that's like specific to. Is it specific to homeschooling or life in general? I'm very disciplined with my time. Um, it's something I've always been. Um, I just, I'm very motivated by productivity. And the thing that I do struggle with is keeping the main thing the main thing. And like, um, like especially with like house projects, I love to do renos and like all that, but I have to be very careful that I don't let that like come in front of like making good meals for my family and stuff like that. Cause I can get so stuck into a project. I can tend to hyper fixate on things. Um, so I do time block very much. So like I have set times where I will do specific things and I do find that I'm much more productive and I can focus and also, um, it helps me to like step away from that and be like, okay, this is this time, but I'm like, for instance, I've been working on my living room painting it and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to work on this, but at 4.30, I am stopping this. No matter where I am in the project, I'm going to stop it and it's time to pick up the house for the evening, make dinner, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, whereas in times gone by, I would have just like pushed and pushed and then it would have been stressful because I would let other things go and that kind of thing. So I would just say discipline is a lot of it. Um, and with homeschooling, it's just, we do the same routine basically every day. So it keeps it simple. Um, do your kids ever ask about going to an in-person school? They used to, my eldest son used to ask about it because we had an extra neighbor who would go and he was just curious. But honestly, the more we've home, the longer we've homeschooled, it just really doesn't come up anymore. And I think they just see the flexibility that they have, the time to play that they have. And also we have a great group of homeschool kids in our community now. And so they're seeing friends a lot. So it doesn't really come up anymore. And quite honestly, they'd tell you that they don't want to go to um, a public school now. Not because I'm like fear mongering, but just they enjoy what they're doing, I guess. All right. Um, you always mentioned that your kids love the poetry books you read to them. And I really want to nurture this to my kid too. Would love to know how it all started. Um, I've had this discussion with a friend of mine because she's so not into poetry. I love poetry. I don't like abstract weird poetry. I like logical poetry, but I do love it. And I've come to realize that I've always loved it. I've actually got like a book of poems that I wrote. Um, I wrote poetry so much, especially in my teenage years and young adult years. It was just like a really good way for me to process things. But also I'm very much into music. I've done piano lessons since I was a kid. I've, I sing, I did violin for a time, played the Irish tin whistle. And I do think those kind of go hand in hand. Um, and so I, I like tried writing songs, that kind of thing. It comes very naturally to me and I really enjoy it. Okay, I had to pause because we had like a big airplane flyover, which is kind of odd. I'm wondering, it's Anzac Day here. I'm wondering if they had like a display. I can't see anything because there's clouds everywhere. But anyway, um, <laughs> So poetry comes naturally to me and I've just always read it to my kids from the time they were teeny, teeny tiny. I have read poems to them and I think just the exposure to it, they've naturally grown to have a love for it as well. Like my son loves it and um, he's not particularly musical or anything, but he does really enjoy poetry. So just lots of exposure. I would just recommend reading it over and over to your kids, read different books, read different kinds of poetry, see what they enjoy. Um, it's short and sweet. You don't have to do it a lot. We read like one poem a day sometimes, but it's just enough that they enjoy it. Okay. The next question is, I would love to know about your faith journey and church. Um, and for the sake of keeping things short and sweet, um, I, my parents did not become Christians until they were just, just before they got married. So they were in their early twenties. Um, and then they attended church and everything. They would still have called themselves real baby Christians like for a while. And then they moved here to New Zealand from South Africa and found the church that we attend now. And that's where their faith really grew and strengthened and they really put roots down. Um, I became a born again Christian when I was six. I have a very 
clear memory of that happening and the thought process leading up to it. Um, and so I was raised going to church, but I very much had my own faith for sure. Um, and then in my young adult years, like sort of late teens, young adult years, not young adult, really late teens, um, I definitely went through a time of testing. I don't think I doubted my faith, but I definitely had to like sort of find my identity in Christ and, you know, hold on to that. Um, and after that point, honestly, it's just sort of was like, well, it's this or that, and this makes the most logical sense to me. And I just continued with it. And, you know, I don't think anyone's faith journey is like this. It's definitely like this. Um, I don't think any of us managed to go like this completely. There's always a little bit of a down there, but, um, it's just something that I see as hope. And I would for sure say that I came from a more legalistic background, my childhood, very much so. Um, not because of my parents, but certainly the culture I grew up in. And there was a time a few years ago where I really felt that my eyes were open to a lot of that and a lot of like the guilt I was living under kind of dissipated. And that has been incredibly freeing, <laughs> like hugely freeing. And I feel like my faith grew a huge amount sort of after that. So I can do a whole video on that sometime if you want. I don't know. Um, it's definitely off topic from my, you know, homeschool content that I share. But um, yeah, that's where I am. Um, I attend an independent Baptist church, but I don't like throwing denominations around because I feel like they mean different things to different people. I would say ultimately I'm a Bible believing Christian and um, I would attend any church that teaches the Bible accurately. <laughs> so I don't hold to denominations, if that makes sense. Um, but I also don't like saying I'm like non-denominational non because that kind of sounds wishy-washy. I don't know. Um, I'm, yeah, Bible-believing Christian and I was raised in that, thank the Lord, because I think my parents did a lot of the hard work to um, get us where we are today. And I certainly see them being blessed as a result. So that's really cool. Um, okay, what else? I'm going to have to break this up into two videos, I can see, because there's still a lot of questions here. Um, okay, excited for a Q&A. Do you have any advice for fostering sibling bonds? My second, okay, that's the first question. <laughs> okay, so sibling bonds, <laughs> this is hard, because I do think that the bond between siblings is just different. My eldest two have a very much a love-hate relationship. They get on like a house on fire and then it's like World War III erupted and that's like that all day long, every single day since the time they were tiny, tiny, tiny. And then my youngest kid just kind of gets on with everyone pretty well and she just has a completely different relationship with both of her siblings than the two older do with each other. So, um, there's that. I do think that my parents did a really good job of fostering family togetherness. And my dad was always very adamant that family comes first and um, that we stick up for each other. Like if someone is, you know, laying into your sibling or whatever, like you need to be right there standing up for them. Um, you don't bully, you know, you don't put each other down in front of other people. Like it's just family is just, it came first. And my parents were good at um, making sure that we spent time together. I think that homeschooling does a huge, you know, it's just helpful in that sense. You're spending more time with each other. Um, I'm not an expert on this. My kids fight, they do, they fight a lot, but I know that they love each other very much. And I think something that is really comforting to me is that I fought with my siblings a lot, especially my brother. So it's me and my brother and then my two younger sisters, and my two younger sisters are seven years and eight years younger than me. So there's a big gap there. And so my brother and I were closest in age. And there were times where we were not even close to friends. Like we were just really, we really fought and there was a lot of contention. And now as adults, we just all love each other. We get on really well. And I think part of that is that we respect each other and that we're not all going to do things the exact same way. But we were brought up with a common um, moral basis and worldview, and that has gone a long way. 
And my parents were just very good at being honest and open. And um, I think that all helped in the long run. So I'm not an expert on this. I don't know that I can say do ABC and you're going to get this, you know, X, Y, Z. Like I, I don't have that. I'm in the midst of it. And I can only pray that like the Lord takes my efforts and like fills in all the massive gaps that I'm leaving and that my kids can grow up and um, be really close to each other because whew, <laughs> there are some days where I'm like, I don't know what I am doing. Um, but yeah, I, I think my parents did a really great job. And so I try and emulate a lot of that. And I, it was just putting family first and like, they were very good at protecting um, family time. So like there were, especially in our teen years, there was like so many opportunities to be with friends and stuff. And my parents limited the amount of stuff that we did with friends because they didn't want that influence to be bigger than the influence that was in the home. Did that completely succeed? Not in all cases, for sure. I think there's just a natural tendency for teenagers to want to listen to their peers above their family. And I think that my parents did a good job of doing what they could at the time and bringing that family togetherness, but it's never gonna be perfect. And so, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's all I can say about it, I guess. I think I'm gonna wrap up this part of the Q&A here because I've been filming for like half an hour at this point and there's still lots of questions to go. So that's part one. Thank you for watching and I will come back next week and finish this off. So I'll see you then, bye-bye. What if the world had your smile what if the wind could spread your love what if your sweetness could reach everyone there'd be no wars 